Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new video for 2021. My name is Miles and you're watching New Tech. Today, we're gonna to be looking at my brand new WorkBee CNC and a hidden feature that you're gonna love. So let's get started. <laughs> I purchased this machine back in 2020, so I've had it for about 10 months now and a great opportunity to figure out the boundaries of the machine. I decided to upgrade because uh, the machine that I was using, the MPCNC, was a really fantastic machine, awesome to get to know how to use a, a CNC. However, it just took a long time to cut because I had to run it at a lower speed. So I decided to go with something uh, more rigid with an aluminium frame. Um, and a much larger spindle um, so I could run projects in a shorter amount of time. So the reason why I upgraded to the WorkBee CNC over other desktop machines is, uh, the first thing is that it's very cheap. So for me to upgrade using electronics I already had, only cost about $900, so that was a great saving. The second thing is the size of this machine. This is perfect for my workshop. I don't need to cram it in, it fits quite comfortably. And it also um, allows me to cut the types of material that I, I need to achieve using a CNC. And the very last thing is that it has a fantastic community online. So if you ever fall into any issues, you can just ask the online community and they're always uh, willing to help out and lots of experienced people there who have probably been through the similar issues before. So I ended up purchasing the 1000 by 1500 version of the WorkBee. Um, you can see there that the cutting area is actually a little bit smaller. So that's 1270 by 800 millimeters. On the right hand side, you can see that there's a voided area, a place where the spindle can't reach because it's mounted on the front of the X beam there. Um, I'm running about uh, 120 mil uh, to 150 mil on the, the Z axis. Um, however, that can be changed depending on how you mounted your spoil board. And I'll talk about that in a second. One really cool thing is that uh, Usnes have actually uploaded the WorkBee CNC as a 3D file to Thingiverse and they've also included the cable chain mounts and other mounts you might need for it. So um, if you download the file and there's a folder in there called WorkBee Files. Now in that file alone you can see there that it has a belt and a screw step file. Now this is fantastic because you can actually open it up in your chosen uh, 3D program. Here I'm using Fusion 360. Um, and you can look around the machine and you can check it out, see how it's uh, pieced together, but it's also great to model from this uh, um, 3D step file. And you can see here that I've used this step file to create my own uh, cable chain mount. So I've had to uh, model my own because I'm using a 50 mm uh, cable mount. The ones that they provided didn't fit my cable chain. And you can see here that that's the base of the cable chain mount. I've also uh, modeled up some really neat housings for the, the limit switches, uh, mainly just to keep the dust out and keep them secured to the frame. Um, I quite like them, they're quite neat and, and certainly hide the uh, limit switches. Um, and for the cable chain itself, to, to mount that on the side of the machine, you can see here that I'm just using some L uh, aluminium um, extrusions there to make sure that the uh, cable chains roll neatly up against the machine. Now you may have noticed here that I'm using two types of material for my spoil board. I'm using a chipboard or a yellow tongue and an MDF. Now that's attached to the base of the table going through the machine and then on top I've just placed the MDF. So on the chipboard at the bottom I've used um, some screw threads. Uh, this is to help me lock down my material when I need to cut it. So you can see that I'm just placing it on the underside of the, uh, the chipboard um, before mounting it to the machine. And you can see here that there's quite a large gap on the side of the machine when I'm placing this material. Um, and I've uh, been able to lock that down to the, uh, the, the head and the base of the frame just using a T-nut insert. Um, here you can see that I'm uh, putting a rear or under insert um, which allows me to hook that yellow tongue directly down into the table underneath giving it extra rigidity. 
Straight after that, I surfaced the, the chipboard alone. Now you can see that I haven't attached the MDF yet because this process, um, uh, I believe, is probably the ultimate for my use. Um, that means that I surface the underneath board, then I attach the MDF on top. And I know the MDF is a perfect height, continuous height. So you can see here that it's a, I haven't needed to cut down this board at all from the hardware store. It fits perfectly from side to side and really leaves no gap on the side for dust and, and material to fall down. So really happy with that build. Now there's a couple of different versions of the WorkBee CNC. I'm currently running on the version 2 which means that the locking nut is on the outside of the plate to reduce the amount of whip on the screw. Uh, the version 1 was on the inside that had a lot of issues with that whip but there's another 2.1 and that upgrade is actually available from Bulkman which allows you to add the extra um, the extra bearing and, and nut on the inside so it's on either side of the plate which is really helpful. Um, if you wanted to upgrade from the version 1 though, I believe that you have to purchase a longer screw thread and, uh, and then buy the extra parts to place around it. So it's a really quick and simple upgrade to try and eliminate that whip as much as possible. Alright guys, now time for the hidden feature. You can see at the front of the machine I have the, the screw thread that's uh, sticking out. Now this is a fantastic calibration tool that you can use. So no need for any rulers to measure your step distance or anything. Um, you can actually use the, uh, the setup of the screw itself. So you can see here that it has uh, four different threads and each at a two millimeter pitch apart. So essentially what you can do is uh, just using a zip tie, you can use that zip tie to attach to the end of that screw. Um, and uh, I mean, if you wanted a more permanent feature, you could probably 3D print or create a wooden one and stick it to the end. But you can see here with a 360 degree movement, the machine actually moves in eight millimeter steps. So if that doesn't make the full uh, 360 degrees or stop short or late, you can tell that the, the steps need to be changed. Um, you can also use this as a, a great way to see if the machine is a line. Um, so I purposely uh, pushed it out of alignment and so it was no longer square. I've just turned the, the motors off, uh, readjusted and now I can tell that the machine is back to the square position and ready to move. I've installed a 2.2 kilowatt spindle on my machine. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for it, but the first thing was um, for power. But the second thing was, is also the size of the collets that the 2.2 uh, kilowatt spindle can, uh, can use. Um, you can see here that I've also purchased a couple of uh, nuts for the end of it. I can have tools pre-installed ready to go, so it's a quick tool change. Now these uh, go up to a 13 mil bit. Um, and the, the reason why I like these larger bits is first of all that they're super strong but because of the size of them you can actually run a lot of your machining a lot quicker um, and they, they handle a lot more of the, uh, the rigor of uh, the machining time. Um, and this also goes down to a really tiny bit as well. So you can do your detail as well as run it on um, your really large bits and cutting down your machining time. So one of the issues that I did read online was that the 2.2 kilowatt system is quite heavy and what happens on it is because it's made out of aluminium for the, the X-Rail there that has a bit of a bow, but you can see it only hits 0 0.07 of a millimeter and really that's half a width of a piece of paper. Now, something to keep in mind when you're using a dust boot on the machine is uh, when you design your dust boot, trying to keep it um, in alignment with your brackets on your uh, spindle because what happens when that hits the side you don't want your dust boot to hit the side so you can see here that's as far as my spindle will go and my dust boot fits in really really well. Now as well as using that dust boot I've installed uh, some LEDs so a ring light under this is quite common to add to a dust boot um, and it just allows you to see what's happening on the machine a lot easier. And underneath the X-Rail there, I've installed a, a really cheap uh, light strip from China. Now this is just a 12 volt, um, uh, just a white light strip, um, the typical one from China. Um, the way to install it, it's really hard to push it in with your fingers. You can see here that I'm struggling a little bit, but they do fit in. Now a really quick way to install it is just to get the machine to roll over it with the wheels in that track. 
So there's one big negative about the machine which I really don't like and that's absolutely nothing to do with the work bee itself. It's to do with the table that I built for underneath. Now I put that together really quickly using super cheap materials and using an old tabletop um, that's actually made out of cheap pine. And what's happened is that when I attached the surface board or the spore board to that table, it began to warp depending on the temperature or moisture in the air. And so I was finding that sometimes the, the, uh, the table would move about three to four mil in certain places. And I was uh, actually causing a lot of issues with that table. So in the next couple of episodes, I will be doing a table rebuild, replacing the current table with something that's really special, really um, unique, easy to use, and um, solving a lot of the problems that I've already built for this machine to make an even better version of what it is today. Guys, stay tuned because there's some wonderful content coming up and I will see you shortly. Thank you.